welcome to another episode of Young Lad in the Corner. Today I'm joined with my fellow Cast5 castmates, uh, Rohan. Yo, what's going on everyone? Glad to be back. And Fires. Thank you, sir, for having me again. I was very, I was sure you were never going to allow me back on the show again, but <laughs> thank you. Hey, man. Well, today we're going to discuss uh, a new topic. Uh, we're going to discuss one game that lived up to the hype and one game that didn't. Oof. This is a, yeah, this, this is a good topic. Good, this is good, a good topic. Good. But I, I say, Fires, you, you start first, because let's get those opinions out. On the I have floor, opinions, right? yes. Rohan. I have opinions. Considering, we have considering these two individuals are very explore? opinionated on their video games, <laughs> that we're going to have a good discussion today. Oh, this is going to be so, great. Let's start with Fires, then. What's the one game that lived up to your hype? What well, lived up, not so really to your hype, but to everyone's hype, really. Well, what's game lived up to the hype? Okay. The one game that lived up to the hype. All right, let me paint you guys a picture. All right. Yeah, here we go. This is how it starts, guys. All right. So me, as a young, I wouldn't say lad because you know I was just a little boy, a wee little boy. Um, when I was growing up and going to elementary school and so forth, um, our school was more PlayStation oriented. Like a lot of people had Playstations versus N64. Or even when I grew up, like I had a, a Nintendo console. I think it was, we, we called it Famicom. So I had a Famicom, not Super Famicom. But back the one the game, exactly, right? Back in the day. But the one game that I never truly played was Zelda. So mm. imagine me on the playground and i have a few people and one of our uh castmates theo he knows these people they used to talk about this game called zelda ocarina of time and 64 and 64 right, right. Yeah. and <clears throat> excuse me so this game you guys can see <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> about this story it was tragic guys so the, the wee boy that I was, unfortunately, I could not be part of the conversation because I really never truly ever had an N64. I didn't have an opinion when it came down to the Zelda games. So never was a huge fan, never liked it. Then fast forward, um, the GameCube comes out and the Wii comes out. And we had, we had a friend that lived in the same building as us. Uh, he recommended... Zelda Twilight Princess. So I was like, you know, Zelda is a huge title. Everybody seemed to claim this game was like the second coming. So I was like, okay, let me let me try a variation of this game because I'm not sure if you know, Daniel, if you've ever played Zelda games, but they are not really connected. There is the universe somehow links the timeline and so forth, but each game is its own entry. So yeah. I was like, okay, great. Let's try it out. And I did not like that game <laughs> at all. So build up to, yeah, it, was a it, it was not that great. So I was like, okay, you know, Zelda is maybe not my thing. I love Final Fantasy, as you can tell. But maybe Zelda, Zelda is not one of those games that, um, that I would live up to, like that I would enjoy. It never lived up to that hype. Fast forward to 2018, guys. 2018 nintendo dropped this trailer actually 2017 it dropped this trailer game came out in 2018 a little game known as zelda breath of the wild all right i hear this little bit of the piano music dun, 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 dun. and i'm just like okay what is this I like I, I, I like uh, instrumental music. The music is kind of get, getting into me. I see this vast open world. Graphics are not as high tech as, you know, much modern games were, but it had its own little charm to it. And right from the first trailer, it grabbed me. I was interested, but I didn't know if I was going to buy it, if I'm going to play it. Until the second trailer dropped. I went out and purchased, because Nintendo Switch was completely sold out, I purchased a Wii U. I purchased a Wii U. I used Wii U to... The now defunct Wiis. Exactly. To play this game. 
And oh my god. Oh my god. This game not only lived up to the hype, but it surpassed it. Any expectations I had of this game, it like fucking blew everything out of the water, guys. The physics, how well they worked. Small little things such as if it's if you were wearing a sword, it's raining outside. It elect, uh, it attracts uh, lightning, so you can end up dying. But I'll give you an example of how well this game is crafted. It's something I didn't do, but I seen someone do on YouTube. Is he fought this gigantic spider creature that you fight? They're called the Ancients. They're very mm -hmm. high level bosses, and he was like super weak. He threw his sword used the magnet to attract the sword, but he was pretty far back. So the sword wouldn't really come, come back and touch his magnet. It would stay afloat in air. And he waved it around in an area where it was raining to attract lightning. And he kept doing that over and over again. And the lightning kept striking this ancient. That's how he fought that enemy. And he beat it. That kind of stuff... The Nintendo version of 4. I guess so, right? <laughs> but that kind of stuff was absolutely amazing. Any any place that you see on the map, you can go visit. You can climb anything that you want. Um, I believe they called it an open air game because you have a little bit of a parachute. So it's not just an open world, but it really is. like You can travel, you can go... You can do whatever you want. You can go right to the uh, beginning, like the end dungeon, which is the castle. You can go right in the beginning of the game, go and beat the game within the first 20 minutes. After oh, it's a speed run and you're done. Ex exactly. <laughs> or you can explore the world the way you want to. I have never had such a phenomenal time playing a video game. And it's like, especially a Zelda game. So for yeah. me... That game definitely lived up to the hype. The sequel that's coming out, I cannot wait. On to you, no. Rohan. You tell me. Yes. Okay. So, oh, so we're gonna go off like first. Our well, we'll stick with the positives before we <laughs> start negative. bringing back okay. past trauma video games. I may cry, guys. I may cry <laughs> when we discuss which did not live up to the hype. Okay, so the one game uh, that lived up the hype, lived up to the hype for me was definitely have to say was Mass Effect. Oh my God! Oh, yes, God. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at, at least the first and uh, mostly the second one. <laughs> oh my God! The second, oh, so good. It's um, so good, Rohan. And I, I know I totally believe you, right? And uh, and I'm pretty sure the ending is amazing too. Once I eventually get to it, because I got <laughs> stuck doing everything else because I got so enamored with the actual world of Mass Effect, and that's I have to say, I have to point to the one thing that made made me just so in love with the game and just like blew blew everything out of the water for me is just the amount of exploration and just uh your ability to invest into different uh, different kind of things you want to do me i got into uh side quests and mining the different worlds and exploring the different worlds to a point where that's all i did <laughs> like <laughs> just going to different worlds and different planets mining and exploring these different uh the side quests and on uh and that's on these different planets all the live long day and to a point where Fires was just like, so Ryan, did you beat it yet? Ryan, did you beat it yet? Like, yeah. yeah. And then I got to this next world, it's all ice and shit, man. It was like, <laughs> like yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. But like, okay, but... And you basically just create your own story in the game. It's like, no, I don't want to do any of that. I'm going to be a space explorer. Listen, the last mission is actually called the suicide mission. And Rohan was <laughs> right before the ending. <laughs> he eventually did beat it. I was there when he beat it. But mm. it, the fact is, this man, uh, for a year, he was yeah. there for a year. He just <laughs> mined, man. <laughs> yeah, just mined and explored. Because, like, the 
what like the thing I also like I, I love was just like just playing the game. The the game plays so much fun. Oh the my god, I agree. Yeah. Oh so good. Switching between the different uh uh party members and the different powers and the RPG elements, right? Uh of your of your of your tune and like your different characters that you have, right? And upgrading them and upgrading different weapons right and the armor and all this other stuff man i i just got lost in it if i have i probably think that that was what got me into rpg elemental type of games was mass effect oh wow I think that was because like before i really was into like i was a counter-strike guy i was mm. like a Half-Life kind of guy right uh, first, first person shooters shooter. yeah yeah first person shooters and yes, I had Final Fantasy. Yes, like obviously all of that, right? But uh, the story and 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 just the world of Final Fantasy was that really what hooked me. But the gameplay of RPG of Mass Effect was what really got me. Just just had me just want to keep on playing because you keep on doing all these different things with your different with your characters and like and I just. And I was just enamored with that. And like, I was just like, oh, wait, wait, I could do this with this rifle? Oh, man, this site is so sick. Like, I just kept on going and just experimenting with different things, right? Rohan, and the like... one thing that really got me about, like, that I loved about that game is every planet that you go and visit, doesn't matter how small it is, if it's a moon or whatever, it yeah. has its own uh terrain it's little blurb that it'll tell you that hey this is what this uh planet's about this is how it works this is what the gravity is this is what like they built this so very like galaxy open world kind of yeah man i oh <laughs> gosh i uh, this thing you love my, star yeah. wars uh oh, cool. you, daniel you love star wars yeah. you will adore mass effect the first yeah. three the fourth one, I would say hold off onto the fourth one. The first three, the legendary collection, 100%. Like, that's something yeah. that you would absolutely adore. Okay. And I would I, I would almost really even consider it to like actually just starting from the beginning and playing through, if not all four, at least all three. Because I haven't got to the third. But, like, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it blew me away. I, I, it's basically I just know. an early version of, like, No yeah. Man's Sky kind of thing. But, Mm, uh, a little uh, it's it's a little different because no man's sky it doesn't really have an arching story of your decisions really matter in a grand Mm. scheme of things in mass effect i mean at the very end your decisions kind of mattered but every action you do if you choose to save a race that in itself will have ramifications for the rest of the games like every single little decision you I don't know how they did it, how they were able to carry your decisions from game to game to game. And there's a lot of options. You can choose to be a oh, dick. It doesn't even span the first like whatever, oh, like no, your yeah. game saves will affect it, your games later on. Yeah. Like the it, oh, second or third one. Yeah. So if you make decision the first okay. game, that would carry if you if somebody died in the first game, yeah. that person's yeah. dead for the rest of the story. You will huh. never get to do what uh, any of their arching li- storylines. It's All right. it, it's I would, it, as I, I said. I if you really love hard. Star Wars, and I know you do, you're a sci-fi fan. <laughs> Mass Effect is beautiful. Okay. Yes, definitely recommended. But yes, Mass Effect. At least one or two ones I played blew 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 me away. Blew me away. Nice. What about you, Mister Young Lad? Yeah. What is Oof, that was your. He's gonna pick something new. He's gonna be like God of War. <laughs> <laughs> Still, no, it's like, but just uh, come out. It's not. It's not a bad. It's not a bad. On, uh, <laughs> just to summarize on your games, Mass Effect. I have not tried. Mm. And you're gonna be very disappointed in me for Zelda. And I, for copyright reasons, I I may or may not be touching a portable Nintendo console. <laughs> Don't touch Nintendo, bro. Right? Zelda, Diminished Cap. Oh, Diminished Cap. That, okay. That was the only one I played. On DS, right? On it. the DS? On, uh, no, on a little color Game Boy. <gasps> Diminished Cap? Yeah. Oh, Diminished Cap? Oh, Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance. Diminished so. Cap is about how the, the duckling green cap thing, right? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, okay, okay. yeah, he was on your head like at the beginning of the game. He just suddenly appears, and you're like, "Oh, okay." That's how I get the cat. He's now, he's now my guide for everything. But that is the only Zelda game I played. So no. any of the new ones, the the good ones, I've got no clue. Breath of the Wild, man. Oh, the sequel. I cannot wait. I honestly can't wait. But the game that lived up to your hype. The game that lived up to my hype. Hmm. It's going to be one of the new ones. I'm I'm torn between uh, Horizon or Spider Man. Both hmm. excellent choices. We have oh. to pick one though. Hmm. Actually, no. I'm I'm scrapping both of those. Even though Horizon is one of my favorite games. Mm-hmm. The thing with Horizon, when we're talking about hype, it's all the stuff that's on social media. People have been telling you about stuff like yeah. that. And yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Horizon was pretty much out from nowhere and in, mm-hmm. so I didn't really have much hype. It was kind of like you just had to kind of discover it. Mm-hmm. The game that lived up to my hype, personally, Red Dead Redemption Two. Ah, oh. because that we were all waiting for for years. Five and years, the hype yes. With all the trailers and just seeing like how visually amazing it was in the trailers. And like hearing about like all the different like the storyline and stuff that I was I was excited for, but then playing it, I I was blown away. Just the attention to detail on every tiny little thing that and the storyline as well is phenomenal, especially when you get to the end, too. So the first game came out in 2010. The second game came out in 2015, correct? I think it was five year, uh, five years in between the games. It's 20, a good 2018, uh, eight, eight, year, eight, year, 2018. eight years, eight years, eight years. Okay. I, I'm I'm thinking Grand Theft Auto to uh, Red Dead Redemption two five years for that. But like, uh, remember that? I just meme found. Where, Sorry, Ryan. Yeah. You remember that meme where like Grand Theft Auto five is like, and then like you see the three presidents. Since it was actually <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving. No, that game's man. never gonna die. Rockstar. Like even with the PlayStation Five or March twenty twenty two, and when everyone saw the the Rockstar logo, everyone was like, "Yes!" And then you know there was hype there before we even knew what the title was, and then we found out it's just you know version number three of GTA Five. But oh well, but. Yeah, Red Dead 2, everyone was super excited for it. We were all amazed by the trailers and then just seeing the amount of work that they put into the game and like the smallest things you do will affect the the open world. That's crazy. I will say that Red Dead Redemption 2 has broken open world games for me. Yeah. Because like that that's that's the bar. Right, any game that comes like okay, Assassin's Creed comes out. Which mm. what's it going to be compared to? Red Dead Redemption Two, like yeah. oh, open world elements. Does it do all of that? It, like just expressly, just because it's an open world game, like Assassin's Creed, that it will just immediately be compared to Red Dead Redemption Two. Like it's because like it's like the and you do such a good job that you're now the benchmark for other games. You know you've done a good job. Yeah, it's kind of like ridiculous, right? In terms of what we're talking about, in terms of what Red Dead Redemption Two do- did, right? To like, to any other game like that's. Open and it's just, it's always like, it's, it's, like it's just the small things, right? Mm-hmm. Like one thing I could think of is like you go hunting and you shoot something, but you just leave it there. You can go off. You could do story missions. You could go to the other side of the map. Because if you come back to that same location, that corpse of whatever you shot is still there, just decomposing. And it's like, what do you think of like other open world games in the past? Like, there's no way that that could still be done. There's no memory in the world in different <laughs> games that would be able to hold that in. Like, yeah, it. I was just, I was blown away. I, I, I really, really liked it. I'm hoping they do like a PS5 upgrade and have the 4K graphics one day. But. 4K okay, we'll 60 frames. Imagine how would yeah. that look? Oh, then, for so Red Dead good. Redemption, because it, it looks oh, so man. fucking good. Okay, so like uh, you guys saying that I should play Red Dead Redemption One when it comes up with the remake, and then go into Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption Two because I actually haven't finished any of those games. <laughs> okay, Red Dead Two is a 
prequel. Yeah. Technique. So you could just play Red Dead 2. You don't have to play the first yeah. one. It's actually a prequel. And I could go like backwards and it'll it'll all be good. But I have a I have a question for you, Mr. Young Lad. Mm-hmm. Between Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2, which one did you enjoy more? Hmm. hmm. Let's be two. real. With two, you enjoy two more. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean more of that because I didn't have one personally. I just play it. Uh, other people's houses <laughs> well my my college roommate he had an mm. xbox 360 so when he wasn't around he was in classes i was playing on his xbox and he had uh red dead so that's how i finished the game for the first time I was just playing on his console at least you finished playing that. through the whole storyline and I, I enjoyed it you but... sound like the south park episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but having like seeing red dead 2 on your own widescreen TV, you know, in 1080p on a PS4. That was pretty good. I actually remember when I when I got it, uh, because we waited, because I upgraded my television. And we waited Mm. when we got the place, I got the PS4 Pro, we put everything in, got it calibrated, and then we tried it. That snow level (laughs) and everything. And I was like, what the fuck am I experiencing right now? Like it did you try with? Like Daniel. Was, oh shit! Okay, I thought it was like far hard. Okay. Yeah, that no, no, thing no. pre-ordered for forever ago. We were waiting for it to be shipped. Yep. And we waited until uh, everything was installed, put on the TV. It got calibrated. Then we plugged everything in, and we're like, okay, let's see if this lives up to the graphical fidelity that we've seen in trailers. And oh my god, it was <laughs> absolutely beautiful. But for me, between the uh, first and the second game, I see. I like the second game in terms of story because I really liked Arthur, and yeah. the first game was kind of ruined ruined for me because of Nima because you you really loved that game. So every single thing, bro, in Red Dead you do this, bro, in Red Dead you do this. Um, <laughs> but I think. There's this, there's this weight to Red Dead Redemption 2 when you play that game. You f- the weight, I mean, is f- when you're moving, when you're getting onto the horse. Like, it, it's, a little, it's a little sluggy. Yes, kind of it fe- like I get that it's very, it's meant to make you I feel, think... they try to emote real life. But sometimes it felt like when you're coming back from work and you want to do something, <laughs> you could not play that game in small chunks. You couldn't do it like, oh, oh I'm going to play oh, something. That was a couple of hours at a time. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. So that's my own. That was my only only thing with that game. Like sometimes that game did not feel like a video game. And mm. I don't I don't know. That, that, like, that's not a negative. But like when you come back. Sorry, go ahead, Ryan. More like a simulator kind of thing. Like you're saying, you're saying like it's more like a, a cowboy simulator than it is like a. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Like the game game is a simulation, uh, but <laughs> the story is amazing. Albeit the first what is four hours is very very slow. Oh yeah, when you're stuck on the mountain and you gotta finally come down. Yeah, nothing really happens. In the story for yeah, the first four or five hours, yeah. it 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 pushes you. But yeah. if you stick through it, you're going to love it. When you reach Valentine and you do all of that, the game kind of opens up. But yeah. until the first, like, I, I think it's the first four hours. It, it tests you. Mm, like, you, you it, I felt you it. <laughs> I felt like you had to be in the mood to play this game, to experience this game. It's not like yes. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to be like, okay, like Assassin's Creed, right? Perfect example. I'm going to go raid this village. I'm going to do this for half an hour and i'm done like i just want to be lost in the world to do something whereas yeah. red dead is like you go in to get lost in the world and then you come out six hours later realizing you have work the next day and you didn't do uh what you originally wanted to do you wanted to go to this bank to do something 
But no, you robbed this train that led to this bandits, and then you had to decide if you're gonna crucify somebody. Like it was, it's something completely different in that sense. So, so it's not a good idea for someone who gets sidetracked by side missions a lot. It is a terrible idea for you to play that game. <laughs> oh yes. When you were talking about Mass Effect, that's what I thought. I was like, Red Dead is like, yeah, you could you could do hours at a time and not even touch the story. One hundred percent. I have I have I think even I finished I did the whole story and then some like doing like just side things, wandering around, exploring, and I, I didn't even scratch the surface on half the side quests. There's there's so many so and it's like yeah. there's even random ones too. Like it's not just you you wonder talk to this person like it is like GTA where like a little question mark pops up and you gotta go find that. It's like you'll be riding a horse and suddenly like someone jumps you or you get attacked and it's like, Oh, they came from that settlement over there, I'm gonna go shoot them up over there and it's like you get I'm distracted gonna burn by the that smallest settlement bit. down to the yeah. ground. <laughs> Fuck these guys for jumping me. No, I like there's one I remember like you get attacked by like, or like you're wandering along and you, you see like a cross burning and it's like, oh, it's a clan. And it's like, you can do whatever you want. And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go shoot all of them. Like, a cross burning? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's a clan. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's so many like just small things. It's just like, oh, I'm going to go just, I'm going to go this. I'm going to do that. It doesn't even matter to the story. What or in saying? the whole game and the game scheme of things. What so, were you saying? You know? And join them? No. <laughs> oh, come on. I think I just took a shotgun to a ball and then they started shooting me, so I had to like Yeah. I had to, I had to, jump, I had to get for cover. <laughs> yeah. You can just like right. any random moment you can just get into like a whole shootout for no reason. Like someone yells at you in the middle of town and suddenly everyone's shooting at you and you're in like a massive gun battle. And it's like what the hell did I do? I remember this one time I was in the very beginning of the game and uh, from Valentine, I was going down to a different town on the way. I saw this girl that was about to get raped. And obviously, what do you think you would do? Like, you're like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to kill all these guys. So I killed all of them. And she's like, thank you. Can you please take me to this area? It's right down there. And it was on the other side of the map. Not realizing I'm like, yeah. okay, it's a journey. <laughs> We go down over there, we drop her off, turns down, her husband's missing, then you go try to find the husband. Husband's oh. already been dead. It was like this entire this like rough world. Yes. It's like, it's like you know how like uh, the storyline when like you could like go on any one of these adventures and one adventure would lead to another, right? And you have to like But Rohan, yeah. the thing is, is that the travel the travel between yeah. one place to another, when you're talking about you're traveling to one side to another. Bro, oh, you're talking man. about 20, 25 minutes of travel. Yeah. Like, it, it's like it, almost like a one for one in terms of time scale. Like, no, uh, yes and no. Yes and no. It's just the, it's the distance and the speed that you travel at. That's what I meant. Remember when I said there was a little bit of a weight to uh, to oh, that game? Yeah. So, like, you need to spend time. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but, but, like, you need to dedicate time to that game. It's yeah. not a bad thing at all. But it was just like, sometimes it felt like it was playing against you. You know, you're like, oh, I just want to have a little bit of fun. It's like, no, travel to that area. To keep you there. To yeah. keep you in the world. Travel, travel to that area. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I, I will do that. But, uh, but yeah, okay. All right. So are we moving on to the next, our most... Yep. Uh, now, now it's to bring back your, your past trauma, your... your all the sadness that you had playing these games. What oh is my the game God. that did not live up to the hype? Which game broke you? I am going to apologize in advance for what I'm about to say, because it is going <laughs> to upset some people, uh, some of our viewers and so forth. But I want to say that I <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. If you are not familiar with who I am, my name is Fize. I'm a huge <laughs> Final Fantasy fanatic. All right. As you can see behind me, I oh. actually own majority of the Final Fantasy games. The game that did not live up to the hype is a game called Final Fantasy 15. Mm. Let me take you back to 2006. Okay. 
It was it was what a, a console war waiting to be happened. Like it was between PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and people were divided amongst if they like Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty more or PlayStation Three, right? And during this console war, Sony came out with a really banger uh, press conference. They they showed some games that spoke to me. The press conference didn't really speak to a lot of people, but it spoke to me. Okay, <laughs> they talked about Devil May Cry, but above all, they brought three games in the Final Fantasy series. They really they said they're going to release. Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy Versus 13, and Final Fantasy Agito 13. One game was going to be multi-platform. One game was specifically being made for PlayStation 3. And one game was going to be for portable consoles. But this, these three games will be connected in terms of mythos into one big universe. Sounded fantastic. Have they done that before? Yes, they have with Final with Kingdom Hearts games and so forth. But this really sounded like something that they they understood what they were doing. Ah, in hindsight, I was such a <laughs> such a gullible child. <laughs> yes, Final you Fantasy. You see the sadness in his eyes. Oh my <laughs> god, man! Trust me, Final Fantasy Thirteen. Theo loves that game. A lot of people don't like the game. I do think the story was good. I think it's um it. Graphically still holds up. It's beautiful. Music is great. Battle system is really what made that game. But that game was very bright, colorful. Like it, it looked very appealing to the mass audiences. Final mm. Fantasy Agita 13 was a, a portable uh game. So it was it was cool. Like, you know, it 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 didn't it wasn't all with the shiny specs of the highest fidelity and all that stuff. But Final Fantasy versus thirteen guys. I still remember the trailer for that. Final well. Fantasy versus thirteen, Rohan. Bad Final Bad Fantasy ass. fucking versus thirteen, <laughs> Rohan. <laughs> this game had mood, had angst. It's about this this prince that's sitting on this throne. These people are coming in, this army to to take. Uh, we're assuming the throne from him, and this man single handedly destroys this army hold this teleportation <laughs> teleportation grabs guns kills them blood's coming out and everything and so forth and he kills everything <laughs> he comes back to the front of the gate and he his back is turned he looks at them and just the door closes and then he's sitting back on the throne just looking onward and it goes uh, fa uh fantasy inspired by reality yeah, I but the that. music itself was this song called Somnus. It's this opera, um, gorgeous, gorgeous piece of music that really cemented this really dark, greedy, realistic feel to it. Mm -hmm. People went crazy over this game people were like this is gonna be fucking fantastic <laughs> that's what we wanted first time we're seeing actual real like blood in a video game for final fantasy because like generally it was crazy it was crazy but fast forward four years later 2010 final fantasy 10 uh, final fantasy 13 comes out uh, rave reviews, people are a little upset because the game is not as open world, it's very linear, corridor to corridor. But Final Fantasy Versus 13 is nowhere nowhere to be found. They release small little, they, they dabble and drop small little things, but mm. they don't really talk about the game as much. I was so much into this game that there was this movie, Final Fantasy 7 Advent Children, that was released as director's cut. I imported it through ebay from japan because it had a disc that showed you a very qu uh, quick glimpse of what final fantasy versus 13 looks like in engine and it looked gorgeous they were like no no no, this game exists tgs they showed it it's noctis this girl named stella they're sitting there at a at a ceremony they're talking 
And once again, the music, everything just felt good. This game looked good. I, I was, okay, great. This is fantastic. They showed a few more things. Guess what? You guys didn't like Final Fantasy 13 because it was an open world? Guess what? This game is open world. There's multiple characters you can control. You can switch between battle style. This guy has guns. This guy has this. Guess what? You're going to be able to take over um, a cars and tanks and things like that. You're like, this is crazy. Then they released this trailer between these two factions. Very Romeo and Juliet, Capulets versus, I forgot the other, <laughs> what was it, Capulets versus Montague? Montague's. Yes. yes. Yeah. Like Stella is from one faction. Um, Noctis is from one faction. They have very similar powers. What is happening and so forth. Like very, very cool. And the game disappeared. Final hmm. Fantasy 13 got a sequel, Final Fantasy yeah, 13 2. Yeah, yeah, Final Fantasy Versus 13, nowhere to be found. Final Fantasy 13 got a third entry. Final Fantasy Lightning Returns. Final Fantasy the third uh, for the trilogy. Final Fantasy Versus 13, nowhere to be found. <laughs> Final Fantasy Agito 13 gets changed to Final Fantasy Tide Zero. No longer part of the same mythos and blah, 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 blah. Okay, where the fuck is Final Fantasy Versus 13? Like, what is happening with this game? Why why is no one mentioning this game? It's 20 fucking 12, right? Six years later, where is this goddamn game? And then Final Fantasy Versus 13 has these rumors that come out that say the game has been canceled. The much rumored long-awaited game has is no longer in production and it has been canceled it hurt it it mm -hmm. hurt like you know and then square enix comes out oh we we're not we don't know what they're talking about the game's still in active development everything's being made and blah 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 it'll be shown soon fast forward to 2013 playstation 4 gets announced they have that infamous actually not infamous that famous Xbox had the infamous press conference. Sony <laughs> had that famous conference where they came out and just knocked it out of the park. We allow game sharing. You you can just give your game or keep it. You can trade your game in. We will not allow you to... Uh, your console oh, will DRM. still work. DRM the console. DRM, exactly. Yeah, okay. The console will not break if you're not connected to 24 hours, uh, within 24 hours, if it's not connected to the internet. Didn't and, the Xbox let that uh, that bar for like uh, VR? The, the connect, 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 not the bar. Connect. Yeah, connect. yeah. So, so all connected. these things, but above all, three ninety nine, best price. It's more powerful than Xbox One, and it's three ninety nine. And they showed Final Fantasy versus thirteen. That <laughs> game, all of a sudden, is a reality. Everyone's like, oh, of course, they were moving it over to the new console. And at the end of the, it looked gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And at the end, the trailer changes, and it's the logo changes, and it's Final Fantasy fifteen. <laughs> and your mind gets blown. You're like, this is crazy. None of that shit was in the game. What they showed in the trailer, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> A freaking scene in the hallway where like the the the, the bosses right at the mirrors are getting shattered and bands are doing backflips off of the, everywhere. The city, what? this city is being completely invaded. There's a gigantic monster Leviathan that's oh. out there wreaking havoc, and these guys are going from rooftop to rooftop to try to figure what the hell's going on. Not in the game <laughs> at all. <laughs> And then it comes out, 20, so 2013. Then it, this, is, this is where you know that this game is not going to live up to the hype, but I had hope, guys. I had hope. Then it comes out that this particular game is changing its director. That's not good. The original guy that had the vision for it is no longer part of it. Then they release a demo with Final Fantasy Type-0. There is a demo you can purchase. I remember to this day, I went to EB Games, which is Game uh, Game Shop, Game GameStop, sorry, GameStop, or Game uh, if you are living in the UK. I went in there and he's like, 
here you go. Congratulations on purchasing a very expensive demo. He completely disregarded the game because he knew people were buying it for the demo. And that demo, <laughs> it was cool. It was nice. You're like, this is kind of cool. The way everything moves and so forth, the way everything the game is, but it didn't feel like it 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 it, it, it was disappointing, but you didn't want to say it's disappointing because uh episode dusky or whatever it was called. But you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's it's a reality. It's a reality that this demo exists. Did did mm. Final Fantasy ever had demos before? They did, they did, but oh. like not to this point because this was really a they were testing as a focus group. Because they wanted to see what people liked, what they didn't like. They didn't like the original voice actor for Noctis. And they, they changed that stuff. But this is where I knew that this game is not going to live up to the hype. They announced a fucking universe. All of a sudden, they're like, Final Fantasy XV is just no longer a game. It is also a movie. It also has three different games that are going to come out segregated it's gonna also gonna be an anime series you're like what the fuck is going on oh you want to know more history about the relationship between the four uh four friends watch the anime what mm. it's free it's on youtube but watch the anime <laughs> shouldn't this be in the game no 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 no, no. Oh. this is gonna just create more of, of an understanding of how these relationships are okay then they took the entire fucking invasion of the main character's hometown where his dad dies they took that and put it in the movie <laughs> a movie that's released you're like completely removed from the game you're like okay sure i'll go watch the movie that's that great like a, like a big motivator for a main protagonist to actually <laughs> yo his city <laughs> fell his dad died no 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 no, no. it's not the game <laughs> it's a movie that you gotta go watch lena Heaney is voicing this character you're like hold on but she has a voice actress already in the game why are you changing the character the kid's character model looks completely different than this character model wait they're exactly the same people what the hell's going on there's so much weirdness when it and Sean Bean obviously was a dad. He dies, as I said. <laughs> so we watched the movie. Movie's actually not that bad. We're like, okay, cool. This is cool. And then they, they said this to us, guys. They said this to us. That the game is gonna be completely full. There's not gonna, there's no content, as I said. There's no content removed to create this universe. It's just adding more to the game. It's just adding more to the experience. We're not removing anything altogether. They do a big press conference. They announce the game is coming out in September 2016. Everyone loses their mind. Game gets delayed. Mm -hmm. Now that's not a, that's not, that's a little upsetting. What, what happened there? That's a red flag. Oh, the game got delayed because we want to make sure the game does not have a day one patch. We want to make sure the game is finished. Guess what? Game comes out in October. What did it have? Day one patch. <laughs> they added scenes from the movie, if in case you haven't seen, into the game to give you a context of what happened. <laughs> so that wasn't even in the game. But the main, the main thing that really gets to me is not all of that. So already it's a red flag. It's disappointing. Guys, they took pivotal parts of the game character development for your friends and they sold it to you as dlc Ew. in the middle of the game one of your friends gladio gladius he just disappears he's like hey by the way i'll be right back disappears for a little while it's a cigarette he never came back comes back he has cuts and stuff oh what happened don't worry about it i got stronger okay Find out what happened to him in the DLC. <laughs> Your boy gets knocked out of this train, disappears, comes at the very end. You're like, oh, what happened to you? Hey, um, I learned a lot about myself and blah, 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 blah. What was that about? In the DLC. One of your best friends loses his eyes, goes blind, and you don't know why, why how that happened. <laughs> You get knocked out in this fight, this gigantic invasion. 
Your eyes, like you, you get knocked and you wake up. He has his, his eye. He's blind. You're like, oh, what? Something happened in the in the battle. He's blind. But what he did, how, why he lost his eyesight? Amazing moment. DLC. The villain of the game, his entire motivations, why he did, how, why, and all that stuff, how he was related to the main character. DLC. So you beat this game. The first portion of the game is fantastic. It's open world. It's fetch quests, but you're enjoying it. Then you hit the second portion of the game. And it is you're on this train going to this city that that the guy, the emperor of that city killed your father, destroyed your city. You're going there and it's literally train stop, fight, back on the train. Train stop, fight, <laughs> back on the train. Train stop, <laughs> fight oh back on the train you're like what the hell is going on like they they literally fast tracked everything because the entire area was never completed because the oh. game was rushed so you're saying like like oh like they were rushing at the end but they actually never completed it you right? never so completed that's, it that's not the part that you were talking about the part that sucks the most is the emperor that killed your father that took the crystal that did everything when you finally get to the throne where he's supposed to be at He's not there. His clothes are just there. Turns out he became a demon. He became a demon and he was just chasing after you this entire time. And you never explained that. That just never. They released a DLC, which is called the Royal Edition afterwards, to fix and add all these things in. It's crazy that a company that big screws up a game that much that's so heavily like here's, here's a story you all wanted but we're gonna spread it across all these movies that no one's gonna watch and then have half the game in the game and everything else in a dlc eight million copies <laughs> almost close to 10 million copies are sold because people love that game so much the the music was great guys the fighting system is very broken it's good if you now it's good because you can switch between players and stuff. But in the beginning, it it was it was it was very broken. I'll give you an example how how it was broken. Okay, Farhad that never Farhad that never played that game, never ever fucking played the game. I gave him the controller to fight the strongest enemy in the game, fully waiting for him to die. All right, <laughs> all I told him is like, whenever your HP is low, just heal. Use an item, heal yourself, and when this bar fills up, do your team attack. It took him 30 minutes and he beat the final boss. He beat the most <laughs> strongest boss in the game. Because if you have items in the game, you can completely uh, destroy like the, the battle system. You can break it completely. They fixed all these things. It's not that they didn't. Like four years later... You just didn't suck at fighting and if I had just, you know, kicked your ass? No, 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 like... no, no. no. He, I, I coached him through it, the entire fight. We were shocked. <laughs> Uh, but but the whole thing is that the way the game is the story is good guys the story it's not the story is bad the story is really good the the relationship between the four friends they're basically going on a suicide mission and the relationships between them it's amazing it's authentic you feel it there's a scene at the very end when they're sitting down in front of this campfire and he finally tells them how much what, what they mean to him and he, he tears up a little bit, but he's never said these things. He doesn't like, talk about his feelings, but like all that stuff comes across as genuine. It's done beautifully. If you play the game now, the Royal Edition, the game is great. Like it's great. It's fixed. They fixed it. They fixed the shit. But it took them four years. <laughs> it, didn't, it took them four years. So the people that purchased it at 2016, they fell shafted because I bought the DLCs. I bought everything. <laughs> I did all the, I, I paid what I, I platinum the game. I did what I would need to do to you get us in the game. I disappointed the... you. Exactly. Because it's Final Fantasy. I loved Final <laughs> Fantasy. And this was Final <laughs> Fantasy versus 13. But even down to this trailer, Omen, which is one of my favorite trailers that I've ever, they've ever released. That entire fucking trailer is not in the game. It sets up as a premonition that they took, literally copied like <laughs> scenes from it. And put it in it his dream. A, a dream. It was a dream that he had. 
And you're like, why? It's like lost when, you, when they wake up to the end and they're all in a coma. And it's like, what the hell? So, like, once again, like, it's right there. It is right there. Final <laughs> Fantasy, Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. I, and I, it's, it's staying in the case from now on, isn't it? it? It's never, it's never coming out of that frame. <laughs> I, I love the series, but that game, 10 years, 10 years of hype, 10 years of my, my dreams, my hope this what this was going to come up to be it didn't amount to what i thought it would now having said that final fantasy 14 is fucking amazing final fantasy 16 looks amazing final fantasy 7 remake they crushed it so (laughs) i i have hope (laughs) you know but uh but yeah man 15 was i know i rambled on i said i said settle in (laughs) but i said i said settle in (laughs) <laughs> but that game, that game, guys, was a huge disappointment for me. Well, wow. Now we know that Final Fantasy has broken fires. <laughs> <laughs> what? what What? game did not live up to the hype for you, Ryan? Okay, look, I'm going to be honest straight off the bat. I don't have this grand epic to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Game disappointing me. I, okay. I, I created a scenario, you can tell, right? You can tell that's, that's been resting in there for a very long time, hasn't it? I have opinions, guys. I need to be heard. <laughs> oh, man. That was like a grand epic, bro. Like, like, he just had a whole flashback for the last 10 years of his life. I gave you guys time period, time stamps <laughs> to make, make you understand. <laughs> Like, he's like, okay, this is what he talked about, like the trade scene at this time before. <laughs> man, oh man. But okay, so the game that disappointed me the most was well, to say there was like a reason for my disappointment was actually my own doing, right? Um, it was the disappointment was actually of my own doing. I'm pretty sure the game itself, especially those people who actually do love the series love it to bits obviously uh it's even the esports right and like and still a really i think it's still pretty big in esports i'm not sure starcraft starcraft 2 all right was really a disappointment for me because we gotta cut the show we're gonna get downloaded so much (laughs) (laughs) korea is gonna come out so south korea is gonna come after us man (laughs) <laughs> that, that should be China. <laughs> and, but yeah, they, they lay claim to that shit. Oh man, no, I oh, it was it was my own doing because I was watching a lot of StarCraft um uh competitive mass- ma- uh, matches, right? Like in esports and everything, and uh, I. I, I thought this was like so fucking cool. And besides, and I also was watching, I watched all of the actual cutscenes that explained the whole StarCraft actual mythos and story. Like, uh, I believe it was like, a, like uh, it, someone or someone's cut together all the cutscenes from all the games. And I just watched it and I was, I was like, yo, shit, this is so freaking epic. And this is a RTS? Like, holy shit. Oh man, I I love this. And then when I actually saw the gameplay, right, and all these guys, like uh, of these like highly competitive like StarCraft players, freaking just punching the keyboard at like 120 freaking keystrokes a minute, right? <laughs> and like you like it was like it, it was insane. It was it was it was so freaking crazy. I'm like, how do they freaking do this? It was like, and the battles were like were actually really cool right and i and i always kind of was interested in like these like uh what's it called total war or age of empires like yeah. uh, and these type of games right i was thought it was pretty cool and i thought it's like you know what i'm gonna play starcraft 2 when it became like i'm actually able to actually get this uh up and running properly like a system that could actually play it because guys, I built a computer to actually do it. You know I, remember. Right I remember. I uh, remember. You really hyped yourself up for this game, didn't you? I know. I, I I was there. I was there when he was building up that computer, man. Trust me. I thought I was actually going to go into esports, like playing StarCraft too. Right. I really thought I was actually going to do it because, like, I was so enamored in it. I was so engrossed. Right. Oh man, Kerrigan and and Rainer. 
Oh, and oh god, I forgot to I forgot this other guy's name. Uh, a bunch of other characters, but I, I I fell out. I fell out. I have to I have to admit I fell out all of the mythos in the story, right? Because I was just so oh. It hurt you. So I, yeah, yeah, I was so like dejected <laughs> because I crushed myself because when I actually finally built my system and I actually got the game and I loaded it up and installed it, I was like, yes, here I go, esports baby, fame and fortune. Wait, how do you do this again? Like, no, 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 no. I got this. I got this. YouTube. <laughs> I, I, YouTube. I was just like, okay, like even then, right? Like I was just watching the experts play. I'd never actually really learned myself like uh, like some tutorials and actually how to actually play myself, right? But even though I was figuring, you know what? The best way to learn is to like try and fail, right? Trial and error, right? So I was just going to like go at it until I, until I got good. But I never actually got into it because like i was just so bad right and the, and like i was just so bad at rts i didn't realize i never considered that he's like, honest <laughs> this, this type of games might not be for me like, <laughs> they're so hard they are so hard. Just like, uh, with StarCraft, are you playing against someone else or playing against AI? Online, right? There is a campaign, right? You could play against yeah. AI, right? And like, and, and even then, I was just like getting mocked because like I was trying, because I was so thinking in my head that I knew I was going to enjoy this game. <laughs> And no. it just kicked your ass, it didn't it? It kicked my ass, it kicked my ass, it kicked my ass. It's like, wait, am I doing something wrong here? It's just like, oh man. Like, and I realized it's like, oh man, all as much as I like um uh RPGs, like there's an action and connected element to it, right? To the individual characters mm -hmm. and the story uh and and the story that you feel connected to is told very differently right in in like over the shoulder and like uh and rpg like uh, elemental type games right mm. like uh but in in rts's it's more grand and overarching you're more like experiencing a novel than you're actually like involved directly in the like in each character's actual decisions and gameplay moments mm. right so like and i never really appreciated that right the overall story is fucking cool and the individual characters are cool but you're never actually connected to them like that right on yeah. like on a on a on a moment to moment gameplay to gameplay moment like that right you just see them on the screen and as they're like as you're going through the missions right they're telling you what's happening right but you're not involved in what's happening to them Right, so there's this there's this disconnect that I that I didn't realize that was going to happen. I thought the story was going to be more connected. I thought it was going to be more yeah. connected to the story as I was playing. But just the nature of how RTSs actually play, you have to be like thinking of a million different things all at once, all <laughs> the same time, all the fucking time. Right, you're thinking like, like ten steps ahead rather yeah, than just man. focusing right now. Yeah. And, and, yeah to the story it's no like gameplay all the time all strategy all inventory management right like uh, and some numbers right like <laughs> keeping track like i was like <laughs> oh man yeah rts is art actually for me i enjoy their stories especially starcraft and even war uh, even uh, warcraft too but in terms of how it actually plays i never actually considered that this gameplay type is actually not for me. <laughs> like, and, oh man! But and I, and I watch so many hours, bro. I watch so <laughs> many hours of story. You hear the disappointment, disappointment in his voice, right? I, I studied for this game. <laughs> Kerrigan was like my favorite freaking character because she was so freaking badass, man. Kerrigan was this. Oh, okay, like you guys don't freaking know about uh, Kerrigan. Actually, the, the character. So, there's this one character named Kerrigan. Uh, she's like, uh, she's a a a type of character in the actual game, right? That you could actually build. Right, you could build build different types of like units. Right, she's a particular type of unit. Right, mm -hmm. what uh, what she does, she's a ghost. 
right? So it's like she's there's this sniper unit, right? Very powerful, right? Expensive to make. Ghost but unit, that's a sniper. Ultra. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, all right. Psionic, but they have psionic powers and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Right? Okay. But like uh but she's so freaking badass because her story was the fact that her faction betrayed her right to this horde of aliens that's infecting this this entire universe right and um on this one mission she got betrayed by her faction left to die the freaking aliens took her because she has such powerful psionic powers they change it she put it they put her in a pot and changed her and made her this queen version of themselves with this huge freaking dragon back badass man <laughs> it was freaking so cool like the stories and stuff like these characters are actually fucking awesome you don't actually get to experience that on the like, actual gameplay level <laughs> right so and uh it's just the way the gameplay that rts is it's actually- blizzard right me yeah it's blizzard yeah right? okay yeah because they, they do that all the time right they, they release all these backstories i think overwatch did something very similar backstories and everything but none of that is actually in the game but yeah. they're canon you know, that yeah, yeah. like actually how you play right it's just like about a battle royale no no no, 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 no. that's not what i'm saying i'm saying like in terms of like actual story of characters and stuff those are videos that they release, right? It's never inside the yeah, game you okay. the character do the actual just for like side knowledge stuff but yeah. This is who this Overall, character is. it doesn't even yeah, it doesn't even matter in the grand scheme of things. Like, yeah, it's not going to affect anything in the game yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. Like, you just got to learn how to play. That it. sucks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but that was me. That was me not realizing my preferences, right? Mm. And being so hyped for so long, building a <laughs> computer just to play. Well, obviously, I, I play all the games on it, right? But. It's, it was uh, <laughs> it was a rude awakening. <laughs> it was a rude awakening. <laughs> oh man! Wait, it actually, even oh, no, I thought I could actually pull it out. It's actually behind there somewhere, man. It's plastic dust, literally. <laughs> he's he's burnt it since. You know. <laughs> no, 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 no it's like, that's if I hated it. I didn't hate it, right? I it, it just, just you were not good at it. It, it was not to me. I was not good at it. Like it, it, even if it wasn't good at it, it just it, it wasn't it was actually my type of game. game yeah. I, I never. I loved watching it. I loved the story. <laughs> I loved the world. I just never actually considered that I, I might not actually like playing RTSs. How <laughs> stupid is that? That's no. That's fair though. That's fair. Sometimes that happens, man. Like, oh, hey, a lot of it, like, you respect, you put some respect <laughs> on that game, Rohan. <laughs> but you re- you understand, you're like, I just am not good yeah. at it. It's like Dragon yeah. Ball's, yo, Dragon Ball Fighters, man. Like, oh, I have oh, seen oh. tournaments, like, actual <laughs> tournaments on, like, when I got bored. I'll really put that on and I watch it. It's, it's fucking yeah. fantastic. Are you, I would never fucking go and play that game <laughs> online, though. Because I'm going to, like, I'm going to get wiped clean. I'm going to cry in a corner. Like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a disaster. And she's gonna find me cradling back and forth. Like what happened to him? Like like in in person, you know, side by side, like actually like yeah, uh, see, then, yeah. yeah uh-huh. it's, it's amazing. It's so much fun, right? Because you're just dicking around with friends. Exactly. Online, yeah. yeah. Online's yeah. different, man. Online, you. <laughs> when you get partnered with someone who's like, you know, I'm, I'm doing this because I this is the only thing I do. It's like and, when you, you know, face I'm, 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 a I'm a Jedi master of it. Would you, you know? guys face a fur hat? That's the real question. Because that yeah. guy <laughs> will ruin <laughs> your life. <laughs> Makes you hate the game. Hmm? When he actually goes online and actually play, I want to see him actually. Oh, I've saw, bro, I've seen it. It's actually pretty. It's pretty fun. With some kids online, Mr. Young Lad, you're up. One game that didn't live up to the hype for me. I'm not gonna lie, and this is this is gonna annoy you two a little bit. The first game that popped into my head was Final Fantasy fourteen. Just for just for a split, a split second. Cause you you guys hyped that way uh you're like this is the best the best game ever. You gotta play it. Best game ever. <laughs> you so, have to play it with us. Cause when we yeah. actually do raids, you will have fun. You it's not even that, not even like the all like not even doing any dungeons or anything like that. It's just the the time it takes to get to the yeah. point where you can actually enjoy the game. Yeah. That was the one thing I was talking about. A hundred percent. Especially like later on when you meet Alphanon, like oh my god, if Alphanon sends me to go another stupid errand, I oh, I'm gonna slap kill him. him. Yo <laughs> I Realm Reborn. Realm Reborn did not age well. Oh, 
there's, there's like every little down. thing it's like go do this for these people go do this for these people even now it's a store in uh shadow bringers i just got to the the underwater area and they're like they're not cooperating with us and elfin's on it's like I know what we can do. Even Fancred calls him out on his shit. He's like, oh, I, I, I smell errands. I was like, yeah, thanks, Fancred. Thanks for pointing that out. But, I do still have yeah. to go on <laughs> Yeah, I still have to go do one of these the, things. The more. thing with... Uh, the, the thing with... Sorry, go ahead, Warren. I didn't know how I actually even brought, uh, got to uh, Heaven's War, bro. The actual DLCs, the amount of DLCs. And even though the DLCs, especially like... Uh, oh, the patches? 100%. Sorry, sorry, mm. patches. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, some of the patches, right, were cool. Were cool to play. I have to admit, just the amount. I disagree. Of, between the between Realm of, Realm Reborn to Heaven's Ward, oh, it's a disaster, dude. Heaven's Ward, <sighs> if, I, if I have to recommend anyone to play this game, the reason why I say Realm Reborn is like, so you understand the concept of how MMORPGs work. Yeah. But... Heaven's Ward onwards, orientation. Yeah, Heaven's Ward onwards, bro. It's it's great. You're almost done Shadowbringers. You're you're gonna yes. love this. You're, you're gonna you're really gonna like the. You're loving the story so far, right? Oh yeah. All right, it's gonna get better. It's even gonna anyway, get better. That, that was a side mm. thing that popped into my head. Yeah. It was like carried it enough to hype. I was like, oh, the grinding I had to do. Yeah, yeah All yeah. this stuff. Alpha not made me do. I was like, yeah. Alpha no, sucks. This, yeah. <laughs> that there's one game that. Oh, and I've discussed it already with you guys. I'm sure you guys know what it is. Far Cry 5. Mm. Oh, I was waiting. Oh. I was waiting for him to say oh. it. Yes. <laughs> you paid full I price. Just... <laughs> yeah, full price. The pre-ordered edition online too. So it's not like I can even go sell the copy once I really played it. I was like, nope, it, it stuck with me forever oh, God, on God. the PlayStation, on my Sony account. But... No, like the trailers for that game were great, and Amazing. just the concepts and just reading into it, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be a different Far Cry game. It's going it's to change things up. It's going to be amazing." Like taking out the radio towers, I was like, "All right, that's one of the, like the the more tedious bits of Far Cry. I mean, to go up these radio towers like twenty different times, but you know, sure, you know, take those out and like." Make it more natural, like you wander through the town, you bump into people, you talk to them, they'll tell you the information, then it shows up on the map. I was like, yeah, that'd be an interesting concept, we'll see how that works. It it was terrible. It it sucked. <laughs> it it just sucked so much. The AI was like the main issue. Is the AI like it was terrible. You be driving along, you see the cult members, they start attacking you, and then they just like wander off. Or they <laughs> they, they go shoot something else. Oh, they just turn around and it's like, what are you guys doing? It's like, like uh, oh, it's just Daniel. His bitch ass, we, we don't have to worry about it. Like, let's go talk about this. Oh, and that, and that, that's just the enemy AI. Just even the friendly AI was terrible. Like in the trailers, it was like, you can get a bear. I was like, yeah, I want a bear. I'm going to send an attack the outpost. It was the most useless thing ever. It was like, yeah, go attack this thing. And it wanders off, goes, attacks one person, and then just leaves. And it's like, all right. Or like, and then the AI, when they're fighting it, it's like, oh, my friend's being attacked by a bear. All right. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no, like, that was busy. Busy with his life. <laughs> it, was just, it was all these small things in the game, but the one thing that disappointed me was the story. Like, mm. the way they presented it in the trailers, it, it looked great. But when you actually play the story, it's like when you apply one little bit of common sense, the entire thing falls apart. It was like, it's set in America. It's like a right-wing religious cult has taken over the town. And I was like, okay, potentially plausible. All right, we'll see how this goes. And you get that, it's like, oh, no, nope, it's not like it just taken over the town. They've taken over the town for ages. This is their thing now. I was like, and, you know, no one has any phones to call out. Like, they, they've, they've taken control. They've locked everything down. And I was like, okay, this is America. You've got every federal agency out there. You've got the military. You've got the government. There's no way in hell it's going to be like, yeah, you know what? They, they can have that slice of Montana. We, we, we don't need to bother with that. Well, everything's fine over there. We haven't heard from any <laughs> workers in the town. We haven't heard from the government in a while. Ah, I'm sure everything's okay. It's like the, the moment you apply any kind of logic to it, the whole story falls apart completely. And then 
but the the villains that it, it was just stupid it's like you had to like the three underbosses before the main guy and like the entire game i felt like like austin powers the when later on when uh dr evil has his kid and his kid is like you know trying to like make suggestions and be oh, yeah. like you know oh, God, he's like and Dr. Evil's like, I'm going to take him, I'm going to interrogate him, and I'm going to tell him my entire evil plan. It's like, what are you doing? J- j- just kill him. Don't imprison him. Just kill him. And he's like, no, 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 no. I, I got to do this. I got I got to monologue the entire evil plan I have to do. And three times, every, like, you go before I face the one villain, they capture you. They monologue you. They tell you everything that they're up to. They go on the whole thing they want to talk about. And then you just either escape or they let you go. And it's like, the whole of the story, like, just if they killed you, everything would be fine. I was like, I don't know. It was, that's that's it was a like, Ubisoft game story. right there. Just, yeah, yeah. Damn. And just, and the ending sucked too. Yeah, there are multiple, like, the different endings depending on the choices you make. The one I got was the, the nuclear bomb goes off. That's and actually canon. Great. That's yeah. actually the canon so ending. So at the entire end of the game, I was like, well, that was a complete waste of time. Everything I just tried to do in the game. Didn't even matter. I was like, all right. I was like, well, that's a couple of hours of my life. I'm never getting back. I was just, I was. Uh, 10, 12 hours, I think. Yeah. If you rush through the story, if you rush through the story, it's going to be about that long. But like the whole I didn't rush through the story. I'm not really wanting to rush through the story, especially with an open game like that. Like, you want to go, you want to attack every outpost. You want to try and find all the things. You want to explore a bit. (laughs) It becomes that glorified checklist, right? That you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, it's just after the hype of all the trailers, after playing Far Cry 4 and seeing how amazing Far Cry 4 was, going from that to 5, I was like, no. No, see, never pre-ordering this game again. See, Far Even Cry, with Far Cry 6. I, I'm hyped great. up about that game, but I was hyped up about the last one too. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give it a bump. And I'm going to see what happens. And this is what happens to um, Ubisoft games in general. You just wait. They get released in October. You wait three months, they're going to drop down to $50, $35 yeah. for yeah. Black Friday and so forth. That's when you pick those up. Because yeah. I remember Far Cry 3. Do you know the definition of insanity? Like that game. <laughs> that game, it made sense. A, it was fantastic because of what they were doing and everything. But that game is not a fucking a city in the U.S., no. You know, it's a tropical it's a, island. It's, it's a remote island. Like yes. it makes sense to be isolated. Same here, thing, it's same like, thing with four, right? Like no, they yeah. take you away. Like is that is Nepal? You're, you're, yeah, it's it's meant to be like yeah. Nepal or like a version of that. But it's you know, isolated away. It's a dictatorship. He's locked it's, himself. It's, exactly. it's his government. No one else is interfering in any of this. Uh, it doesn't stand up to you know Montana. It's the island but... of Aladdin. For those that yeah. have seen the Dictator movie, it's the oh, <laughs> island of Aladdin where he takes you. Oh, oh my man. god! It was just—it was just such a disappointment after like hyping myself up. Like, admittedly, yeah, probably it was my hype as well. Like after just experiencing Far Cry and being like, okay, this is gonna be great. But then just the way they advertised it, like everything they showed in the trailers, all like the interviews and stuff they did, it was like, yeah, we're changing things up. We're, we're going to do it this way now. Like, it's no going to suck powers. now. So I was like, oh. The last yeah. two games were great, but this one will suck. Yeah. That's how we'll change things up. <laughs> Pretty much. So, no, yeah, that, s- that was the one that, that killed the hype for me. I was like, nope. This was a complete disappointment. And... It was just like the extra salt in the wound was the fact that I pre-ordered it. I was like, oh, that hundred dollars I'm never getting back. A hundred dollars? Yeah, because I got the pre-ordered one. So I was like, yeah, this game's gonna be great. I'll pre-order it. And I got the, you know, the, oh, the you premium young, one. Yeah, you young lad in a corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stay there. Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. But, I mean, hopefully, six is going to be better. I am, I'm, I'm excited for six. I am excited we'll, for Final Fantasy we'll sixteen. We'll see. Hopefully, yeah. that one's better. <laughs> Are you excited for StarCraft, sir? Actually, you're never going to play the game, but yeah. I mean, even like Blizzard's going to freaking survive. There's going to be a StarCraft. Oh, I don't know, man. Blizzard's uh, oof. That's a topic for another day, but yeah, that's definitely. Yeah, they're <laughs> oh, oof. But uh, that was fun. 
Thank you so well, much, sir, for having us. Now you've, you've heard all our, uh, our ups and our downs of our gaming histories. So, you know, if you have any your own games that you lived up to the hype and didn't live up to the hype, feel free to share it in the comments. I'm, I'm sure we'll love to read about other people's pain other than our own. But just get a different perspective. I want to see what other games have been playing. What oh. games? What games should we play if they lived up to the hype? I, I need I need new suggestions, and I need to know what games to avoid. That, that's the other <laughs> one. What not to waste my money on? A hundred percent, I agree. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for today. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you again soon. So thanks to Rohan and Fires for sharing that's, their uh, experiences. Awesome. Thank you, sir, for having uh, us. Indeed. This is Cast Five signing out.